Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are listening to the Life After Her podcast with yours truly, Nicole and Sweeney. We are officially on episode number 38 entitled Trials and Triumphs. Guys, I am so, so, so excited to have some of my sister friends on today's podcast episode. And we are just here to talk a little bit about what I discussed about them in the book and to just have a little bit of girl talk. So how are you ladies doing today? Awesome. Excited. So proud. Yes. <laughs> Glad to be here with you. Yes, same. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So we are just going to go right into it. Now, my first question for you ladies is, what did you think about your character name and what I wrote about you? But before you answer, let me just give the folk who didn't purchase Life After Her, y'all go get y'all copy um, so that they know who you are. So first, we're gonna go in alphabetical order. Brittany is Blessing, Stephanie is Symphony, and Tiara is Rain. So, what did you guys think about your character names and, and how I described you? Oh, well, uh, when I first uh, read mine, I said, yeah, she will give me a churchy name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I thought it was very nice. I was um, very encouraged. I thought it was very sweet the way you described me. Um, uh, I think you you even went down to skin tone. So. <laughs> I just thought, I thought it was very kind and um, very encouraging. It just felt like a, just brought back all the sisterhood memories when you um, begin to describe us each. So um, I'll I'll rock that name. Thank you for it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. That's all right. Sure. Okay. Well, at first I was like, hmm, symphony. And then it made sense because I was the one who would lead praise and worship (laughs) when we had our Bible study because I was like, I'm not really getting a name. But then, you know, it made sense. And the way you described me, I was just, I was humbled. That's what I'm going to say. I was definitely humbled because I was like, oh, you know, you might see yourself a certain way, but it's always great to see how your friends see you, Mm -hmm. which is definitely different from, um, sorry. It's okay. Which is definitely different from the way, you know, you see yourself. So yeah, I was definitely Mm -hmm. humbled. Okay. Thank you, Symphony. Yeah, I agree with Symphony, a.k.a. Stephanie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, seeing yourself reflected through someone else's eyes is always humbling and endearing. Um, And I, you know, I work at, at being empathetic. And so the character that you uh, wrote for me was very empathetic and I could see it in the way that you um, allowed her to show up in the book. So yeah, I I always enjoy um, our time together, all of us, um, Mm -hmm. because we get to see ourselves reflected in the eyes of each other. And um, you all have always been encouraging. And so to see it actually come alive on paper, um, Nicole, It's just, it brings tears to my eyes and a smile to my face because, you know, we've always been waterers to each other. So, you know, it was, it was reflected in, in your book. Oh, that's so sweet of you guys to say. Now, Tiara, you didn't mention your name. Your name is? You said my name was Rain, but I thought you told me my name was Treasure. Your name is Treasure. I do apologize. Yes. not Rain. (laughs) Tiara <laughs> is treasure. So, See, I, I was trying to cover you <laughs> from making a mistake in your own book. <laughs> Rose is rain, but yes, you are treasure. And one of the things as I was writing you guys' characters, I tried to keep the first letter of your of your first name. So if you notice, S for symphony, and of course it connected to you being the lead of praise and worship. Um, Brittany Blessing, because you were like the president of the LBM club and you just brought so much to our group. And and Tiara, you are literally a treasure. Like everything about you is just, it's a treasure. You're, you have so many different gifts that we lean on with you. And so I wanted to come up with, with names that was very, very 
um, fitting for each of you. And I think it was uh, fitting for, for each of you. So once this turns into a movie, you ladies will either play your role or you can choose someone who wants to play play you. Now, I got a question. Did you said <laughs> we could be authentically us. Yes, please do. So, <laughs> Treasure sounds like a stripper name. Does it go no, two ways? No, <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it can either it can go either way. It's a high value. So, I know the church folks is watching. I had to throw a little something in there. <laughs> oh, that is too funny. So, yeah. So, I wanted to come up with names that was very fitting. So, I just thought it was what is what it was very very appropriate for each of you. So let's get into the good stuff. When you guys were transferring to Rutgers or going to Rutgers, because I came in much later than, um, than all of you, what was it you were specifically looking for as a young African-American woman going to a four-year university? Did you have any ideas of what you were looking for or what you wanted to get out of college? What were some of those things you, you were thinking about? Don't all go at once. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess I'll start. I guess for me, I was looking really just for an education because um, my parents had instilled in that instilled education in me at a very young age and that that was what it took to you know actually get out of the hood because I grew up in the hood you know mm -hmm. <laughs> so get an education get a good job you know and so forth and ultimately that's what I you know went to college looking for and I can't well wasn't gonna say it but also like you know meeting some cute guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and you know, me. coming out of my shell a little bit because very much introverted. So mm -hmm. I was like, mm, maybe I'll meet somebody. So yeah. Okay, that's an honest answer. You you're not the only one, Steph. So <laughs> <laughs> I third that. I third that. <laughs> well, like like Steph, I'm uh, very introverted, more so than um, than I am now, and so uh, I had a lot of. Um, individuals you know that were encouraging me you know go to school get your education at that time I was going to be a lawyer I don't know if you all remember that that was my my goal mm -hmm. and look how God steps in and does some things mm -hmm. <laughs> won't he do it right. <laughs> <laughs> so um I, I came in with like a very focused narrow um view of you know I was just there get my degree I had uh, been warned about all these different pitfalls of college and, you know, stay away from these type of people or, you know, you, you're going to see a lot of things around you. So I was very guarded um, mm. came in at that time. And so uh, sure, we'll get into stuff later, but me and you all kind of helped um, really bring some new, some new fresh relationships in, into my life. So. I think um, I reflect back to your, your story. I came in as a transfer student and I kind of had a, I had gone through a lot of stuff before I got to um, to our our institution. I don't know if I could say. It. Can I say? It? You can. Okay. So I had gone through a lot before I got there, and I had transferred <clears throat> from another institution and had some um, really hard life experiences. So when I came, and I was also I felt a little insecure because I was a little older than everybody and had lived some such a challenging experience before getting there. Um, and so for me, when I came in, I was not I was not necessarily looking for anything. I wasn't looking for the connections I made. I wasn't technically looking for the sisterhood I found in you all. I was just trying to figure life out and, you know, trying to figure out how to heal from some of the devastating experiences I had experienced. Um, like you and, and Stephanie, I grew up in the hood as well. So my narrative entailed you know, what you can understand from a young adult or youth going through urban experiences. And so when I came, I, I had PTSD. I, you know, if, if I could describe it as that, I had a lot of trauma mm -hmm. that I was trying to work through and navigate as a young person. Um, and so I did not trust as well. Um, and so I think in coming into all of our relationship, we were all navigating that, like, can I, can I not, can I, um, excuse the 
detector in the background, but you all offer sanctuary and consistent safety. And so as, as we leaned into closer friendship, you all proved to be trustworthy. Um, and so that, that unfolded into something beautiful, but I wasn't necessarily looking for anything because of my, my history of trauma. Mm. Yeah. I think at some point, all of our stories connected with just trying to get away from something and get into a better space in life. Because I know personally for me, I wasn't looking for anything in particular being transferred into records, but I was looking to get away from home because home for me was a symbol of her devastation. And I felt like I just needed a change. And unbeknownst to me, God had, you know, position me to a point where he would connect me with a community of sisters that would really just help in my process of getting to a better place. And like you said, treasure, um, a, a place of safety and, and sanctuary. So when I got there, I had not planned on finding that, but it was definitely a blessing that I was able to um, have access to that in each of you ladies. And so before we move on to our next question, I want to introduce our next sister friend who is Rose, aka Rain. Thank you for joining us. Did you want to say hi to the to the people? Hi. Hey Rose. Hey, Rose. Hello. Hi Rose. Good to see you. Staying so here. Looking good, ladies. <laughs> How's it going? Thank you for joining. Good. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So we were just talking about our experience at Rutgers and what was some of the things that we were looking for coming to Rutgers University or what were you trying to get away from? So did you have any uh, input on that, Rose? Um, yeah, I, I guess. I mean, the same as you, you were trying to get away from home. For me, I was trying to get away from home, you know, a sense of like a sense of freedom, because I, I grew up where, you know, sh my parents were very strict, and they just wanted us to be home. It's like school home, and that's it. So for me, it was more of like, I want to get a away from home and just explore and new things and things like that. And yeah, so pretty much that's me. And then um, I think that summer before coming into Rutgers is when um, I got saved. Mm. So going in there and then, um, you know, just exploring in the floors of the, the dorms, I see, you know, the, they started the, the um, you know, with Kiana and Rachel with their, um, with the Bible study, with branch ministry. And that's where I was like, okay, I found a new home and I found, you know, this new thing that I'm trying to explore and not knowing what it would be, what will it end up to. But yeah, pretty much it. Yeah. So I so for those who are listening and may not know the backstory of how all of us got connected, we all were actually at some point or another a part of an on-campus ministry entitled Living Branch Ministries. And that was talked about a little bit in my previous episode, episode number 37. And that is all, that's how we all connected with each other and began to just hang out with each other and get to know one another better. And so Rutgers was a small campus, but I think the the on-campus ministry, along with our campus minister, Reverend Stan, it really helped us to foster our sisterhood relationship and even strengthen it because each of us was going through going through so many different things in our lives and we just had each other to lean on. So what I want to ask you ladies, and we've been friends or knowing each other for, I want to say 15 years probably 15 plus years, because I know I transferred to Rutgers, I believe it was 2006, and some of you were there before that time, and so I would say over 15 years of friendship, and you don't see that too often 
among friendships, period, especially with women, unfortunately. So let's keep it real, right? <laughs> and so it is truly a blessing that we are still connected with one another and we don't talk every day or see each other all the time, but there is still that connection there with each of us. And we pick up like right where we, we left off. So what is it that you think keeps sisterhood and friendships together for a long time? I know it's, it's a loaded question, right? And it's a lot to process, but I think it's important for our viewers to know exactly what keeps sisterhood together. And we don't see eye to eye all the time and no one is perfect, but I think there is some, um, there's a blessing in keeping a community of sisters, right? Because we go through so many things, we experience so many things and having a sister to lean on is important with getting through life experiences. And so again, what, what do you ladies think are some things that keeps, sisterhood and friendships together for a long time. I'd like to uh, to start this part. So one of the things I think with us was our common connection um, to our faith, our connection to Christ and to God. Um, that That is the bedrock for our friendship, um, that mutual understanding of the core tenets, you know, of our beliefs um, is what, what mutually held us together. Um, I think also in understanding that all of us had experiences that were trying, that we knew that there was a way to look at adversity as not a daunting experience, but something to build us. And so as a part of that building process, I think we offered um, a level of relational architecture to each other, right? To see what God was doing in each of our lives and to look at the other side of it, right? To um, see how the narrative of adversity would attempt to destroy us, but offering um, language of faith that will continue mm -hmm. to upbuild and encourage. Um, and I think each of us in places of, of our tri trials were um, voices of edification, you know, and encouragement of support and comfort of sweetness, um, mm -hmm. so a sounding board to each other, um, and also voices of honesty when we saw deviation from the path of, of purpose. Um, mm -hmm. And I think as a result of that, that brought us closer together um, because, you know, to some degree, some would say, it's a trauma bond, but it was not a trauma bond. Mm. It was a bond of faith, right? That mm. connects, that connected us heart to heart and, and breast to breast. And I think mm. we were able to lean on each other in a way that um, we didn't perhaps have outside of the space. You know what I mean? Yes, a bond of faith. Absolutely. That was very, very powerful. That definitely kept us connected as sisters. Anybody else want to? comment on that what what is it that keeps sisterhood and friendships together for a long time I think Tierra pretty much summed up everything that I would like to say and she said it so eloquently so mm -hmm. um I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna belabor the point but I think for the common theme besides you know the divine friendships that God had already ordained for us was also the fact that all of us, you know, we wanted a place to belong, even though we didn't necessarily voice it or even think that that's what, you know, we wanted. But I sensed that, you know, God had already placed that in our hearts for us to find this, this niche, you know, so the fact that we were all able to come together in different walks of life, you know, and I always say this, <laughs> Brittany and I have like, you know, discussions about this all the time. Like, I never thought I would be in a sisterhood with majority African-American females <laughs> because mm -hmm. culturally, you know, I'm Haitian. So growing up, Haitians and African-American women, especially women, 
did not get along at all. And the fact that, you know, my best friends and sisters are African American women is very, you know, is very indicative of, you know, God just putting people in your lives that are going to enrich it. I would have never thought so. I would have never been like, yeah, God, you sure. But it's been the biggest blessing of my life. So. Um, yeah. Um, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Bert. Yeah, I echo what Tierra and um, Stephanie have stated. Definitely um, our common interests, our faith and in God kept us uh, grounded and connected. And I'll also say um, just our process of discipleship mm. and, this, and this goes back to what your conversation with Reverend Stan we really did life together when we yes. talked about those Bible studies and us going through mission statements and uh, series on friendships like we studied together we learned these things we prayed we worshiped together um, uh, laughed together and then so it was you know that bond through discipleship and also I think everyone brought some to the table that we all probably were lacking in our personal lives, right? Mm. Different experience. So um, we were all able to kind of lean on each other. And it kind of, I think those are the things that really just kept us knit um, throughout the years. And, and having had done community together on campus and um, sleepovers, uh, you know, um, staying in the same rooms and also just going on road trips and mission trips. So we we did life together. So that that's what happened. That's one of the things that has kept our relationship mm. throughout the years. Wow. I love that you said that. We definitely did do life together. And looking back on our years at Rutgers, we even celebrated each other's birthdays. We went to the <laughs> mall together. We would go out to eat together. We would sleep over, you mm. know, in each other's rooms together. We did so much together. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Yeah. Wow, we really did life together. And we were and we were committed to each other as well. Like we I felt like there were um you know seasons where we would study together if we had a class together. So, yeah, we were really committed to each other even even through the rough times because we shared our personal stories with each other and our hurts and things that we were going through. Mm -hmm. Um and we never <laughs> left each other or, or judged each other for what we were going through. If anything, we were trying to be there for one another. And some of those things don't come naturally in friendships and in sisterhood, but we just, we, I mean, we had it. We just really did have it. We didn't have to force it or anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. I think our friendship honestly was a miracle because when you look at how people I mean, just with working with college kids in general, right? Like I see cancel culture with, is such mm. a pervasive thing, right? Like when, th when people say things that you don't agree with, oh, you cancel. But the miracle of us having 15 plus years of friendship and sisterhood, um, you know, really reflects to how spiritual intimacy grows relationships right mm -hmm. and we devalue that in our time you know praying together just being as as Britt said being discipled together you know um reflecting on purpose and how scripture you know uh connects to the core tenets of our lives like doing all of that together doing life together really created this level of spiritual intimacy that that really dug into the foundation of who we are. And I think if I could translate that into a teachable moment, um, that when you do spiritually practice life together or um, engage a spirit, spiritual practice together, it does grow a bond that's unbreakable. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Unbreakable. Y'all remember how I used to say, till death do us part, that's still today. <laughs> I don't remember that, but okay. Oh, I always, you don't act like you don't he know. Has, I don't remember seeing it. No. He has, I remember. They, look, we, this is, y'all in this for life, so it's no going anywhere. So you're stuck. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Rose, did you want to add anything? Rose, Sorry, huh? Sorry. Uh, yeah, just um, the journey of like, you know, life itself, like, um, you know, you're trying to experience 
experience it for yourself but having having everyone having like um you know a piece of a piece of um nicole a piece of britney a piece of tiara and stephanie and everyone else and it 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 molds you to this um woman that you never thought you would um rise up from it you know what i mean so mm. even having with with us together and just experiencing everything that that made the the journey of rockers camden worthwhile you know even though you're like oh camden is like Ugh, you know even if till this day even if i tell people i went to rockers in camden though they're like camden we never never exist but but there's a lot of things there good things that come out from there so so just that alone you know it, it's really great you know having all of all of you guys in our you know the life when we were you know with the journey that we have there yeah absolutely i i agree with those sentiments rose i do feel like out of Rutgers came you guys and it was it was worth me being transferred to to that 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 college and it's so interesting because i had applied to other um campuses at Rutgers, and camden was the only one that accepted me and it was two hours away from home from me and like I said earlier, it was to a point where it was like, I don't care. I just want to get out of here. And it just ended up working out for the best. Mm-hmm. And people ask me, did you ever feel hesitant about being transferred to Camden? As you were saying, Rose, um, you're away from home. You didn't know anybody. I was like, no, I, it was just to a point where I just wanted to get away. And I don't know if you ladies know this, but Originally, I had transferred to Rutgers in spring of 2005. And so I didn't meet all of you until maybe the next semester or a full year after I was already at Rutgers. And so I was on campus. I think I remember Stephanie saying this with my blue North Face coat. (laughs) Walking around campus with my book bag on. And, you know, just doing uh, college campus by myself. And it wasn't until I believe I was in class with Stephanie, I think Diana, Nichelle, um, that I started being a part of, you know, some type of sisterhood, friendship circle. And then you guys invited me to Living Branch. And I just remember uh, interacting with Tiara and you as well, Rose and Brittany. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Brittany, yeah, we had some funny moments. I'm I'm gonna leave that off camera, but <laughs> your relationship is so fun to watch. You and Brittany, I don't understand the chemistry. <laughs> y'all, y'all back and forth is like a show. <laughs> well, you know, we, we we actually are we shared our dorms were on the same floor and yeah. we never knew it and yeah. until Living Branch. Yeah. You know, I just always remember seeing Nicole, her nice, pretty smile, and we just said hi. <laughs> then when we got to know each other, yeah, it was it was on at that point. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was on at that. But but remember, Brittany, we started off really nice and, and sweet to one we another. Did. And I don't know where <laughs> it took a left turn where we just started getting smart with each other. Probably the first mission what? trip. Oh, it, it had to be the mission. mission. Had to be. <laughs> oh yeah. Mission trip. I, I yeah. avoided those mission trips. Like you, you know what? You were smart, Tiara. You don't know man. what you was missing, though. Oh, God. You know, I regret it, but then I don't. <laughs> That's funny. But I was going to say, I remember one time I had borrowed Brittany's curling iron, <laughs> and I had it for a long time. I'm so ignorant. I'm sorry for doing this. So when her birthday came around, I ended up putting her curling iron in a gift bag and putting it that. back to her. Who does that? You did the same to me too. Yep. I did. Wow. Yep. That's Listen, when it I was a you are notorious for re-gifting stuff that you borrowed from them. You sure are. You did the same thing with my headscarf. What is that? And for me, it was a um, it was a, a cream color cami that she used for her graduation picture. Oh, I ain't get it back to I don't know a year later in a gift bag yet again. Listen, I have a justifiable answer. We were struggling really? college students. We were struggling <laughs> college students. So. So what about the struggle we endured? I, I didn't have my, my uh, flat iron for a while. I gave it back, though. I gave it back. 
Lord. That, don't, that don't count, Bishop? I, I just have one question. Did you know you were going to keep it that long when you, when I you got it? I did. There wasn't a <laughs> no plan. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, See, it was ladies so and gentlemen this is what i'm talking about <laughs> <laughs> so so speaking of fun moments while at Rutgers, we always used to do our infamous brownie nights do you yeah. guys do you ladies remember we used to always bake brownies and just hang out together in somebody's room or we would just like cook and just hang out and chill. And it was, it was so much fun. Mm -hmm. So y'all want to talk a little bit about that? Like how did, how was it being in a college dorm? Cause to um, Brittany's point, we literally were doing life together. We would wake up to each other. We would go to sleep, you know, to each other. We would spend money together, eat together. We did everything together. So what, what was it? What was it like just being able to have fun with each other and do things to help de-stress during college? Because college was stressful. Mm. I would say my first year, I roomed with a group of women that I didn't really get along with. And I very much isolated myself. And part of it too was the fact that, you know, they weren't Christians. And of course, being a, going into college as a Christian, and like Brittany said, I was already warned, you know, don't hang out <laughs> with those non believers, you know, stuff like that. And you don't want to fall into all those traps and things. So I kind of kept myself apart from them. And they sensed that too. And they, you know, it was like, oh, the little Christian girl, she's boring. She's this, she's that. <laughs> so it was very lonely. But then my second year, I ended up rooming with um, Nichelle, Diana, and um, Danielle. And that's when I met you other ladies. And it was like, oh, college can actually be fun. You know, because all I was doing was just going to class and studying. That was it. So then meeting you guys, it was like, even though we were studying and we were doing typical college stuff, we still had a lot of fun. And one of the things I remembered was we had, <laughs> we had haters night, <laughs> which was the opposite of Valentine's <laughs> Day because we were all single. <laughs> so we, once again, we made brownies, we had pizza and yeah, we just chilled and we bonded over the fact that we were all single. We weren't bitter. We were just single and we were just, you know, having a good time. <laughs> yeah, we had to make the most out of everything, right? While being on, on college and on, in college on campus. So those, those moments were, were fun. It's so funny. I think even when we get together, like we still, there's certain traditions that still follow us 15 years later. And that's mm -hmm. one of them. So when we get together, we have to have brownies and we have to go to Walmart. It doesn't yeah. matter if yeah. we need anything or not. <laughs> and I think Brittany leads the charge in Walmart. Because yes, she said, because anybody want to do a Walmart run? Yes, Brittany. <laughs> so Nicole is usually the one that asks for brownies and mm -hmm. Brittany is the one that asks to make a Walmart run. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah. 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 Food. Food, you know, food for us was a scarcity. So like we shared food often. <laughs> um, so I don't even know how that brownie tradition like started. Do y'all know how that started? I have no well, idea. Here, I walked into that. I think by the time <laughs> I met you all, uh, Stephanie and Nichelle and Nicole, y'all were already, I mean, y'all were serious about the brownies. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just threw the love that <laughs> right right I don't I don't I walk I feel like I walk through the brownie tradition Stephanie I don't, did you? Nancy's brownie. I don't think I've had Nancy's either no I, I remember need one to have day. Nancy's no one night she made brownies for all of us and her brownies had a lot of magic in it <laughs> 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 and I remember her arguing with somebody like, no, let me make it. <laughs> uh, that kind of sounds familiar. That kind of sounds familiar. Yeah. All I remember brownies and Chinese food. We would, yeah. We would study or come back from church. Brownies or Chinese food. Yeah. yeah. We'd go to Crown Fries. <laughs> that I remember vividly because Diana and I, we got banned from using the shuttle. <laughs> 
<laughs> because we took the shuttle to go to Crown Fries late at night, and they told us it wasn't for our own personal taxi. <laughs> Listen, y'all had hey, to- they told us to make sure, you know, we're not walking out late alone. So we called the shuttle. We went to Crown Fries, which was right across from the, you know, Walton Rand Transportation Center. That's mm-hmm. what we did. And then they was like, we want your ID. And then we got banned. <laughs> Rose mentioned earlier, though, <laughs> she was like, Camden. <laughs> you know, it seemed like Camden wasn't a dangerous place to be late at night. I mean- <laughs> right. Right. I remember sleeping over at Rose's apartment um, a couple of times. You were, were, did you ever live on campus, Rose? I know you definitely lived I didn't. in the apartment. Okay, I do remember that. So we were wherever, you know, you guys were, we were, and we just made sure that we, we stayed connected with one another, which was a lot of fun. And then with studying for papers and exams that was that was very interesting as well so we needed those brownie nights all the time mm-hmm. yeah all the time. That was yeah, I look forward to those because I always felt like we would I always knew we would have a laugh and you, we needed those very often in college <laughs> so yeah. it was the outlet I, I mean you know I don't think there's ever a time we get together where we're not uh, it's a therapeutic experience where yes. we're sharing our hearts and then back to laughing and cracking. Yeah. So it's, it's a healthy exchange every time. Yeah. What was y'all's favorite moment of our time together? That's a good question. I had too many. Yeah, yeah. I can't even um, pinpoint one because, yeah, it's a lot. Mine was our Living Branch concerts when y'all forced me to sing. <laughs> yes oh my god what was it the gospel jam yeah y- yes and we all decided to wear our afros what was it a special theme or something i don't know oh yeah. i remember seeing the pictures with all of us with our hair natural or something weird but yeah <laughs> that was my favorite because we worked so hard at those events and i felt yeah. like and I'm going to say this. I felt like doing things like at Rutgers and student affairs always became a challenge yeah. to overcome in addition to stuff that we had to do for events. So it was like mm-hmm. working with the system Yeah, that always felt like it was not for us mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah. then work it together. But you know what? All of that, those challenges actually prepared us for our lives now. Yes. We are all going through challenges in our careers. So, yeah, yeah. Rutgers definitely prepared us. Yes, Rutgers prepared us for a lot of things, even for the muffins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> we you had insider. So if you don't know what muffin is, people, listeners, podcast listeners, don't worry about it. That's our little inside thing. But just know if somebody ever call you a muffin, that's not a good thing. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. Wow. Those events were good. The the events were always good. I mean, even though we struggle, because it's so hard, um, since we are a faith base, it was always hard to get people to come out Mm-hmm. and join us and just be you know just experience that they think it's going to be boring or things like that and honestly you're right um tiara asking for those budgets were always oh, always God. challenging i mean seriously it's like it's like pulling teeth to, pulling teeth from them like it's like coming out of their pocket all the time it was always hard to get those budgets and it's mm-hmm. always oh it's always a no how many times we have to go back for those but like um, Stephanie said, it did, you know, prepare us for, for what it is for the future, which is now. So it was always mm-hmm. a good thing. God, know, God knows exactly what he's doing with us when we were in Camden, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's yeah, such that's a so good true. point, Rose. Mm-hmm. I, I also have to give a shout out to Reverend Stan because he really did teach us and, and guide us in how to advocate for ourselves because I don't think I knew how to do that going into Rutgers. Mm-hmm. And so when it came to 
you know, the system working against us, it really did, uh, he really taught us how to advocate for ourselves and to, you know, stand up for what's right and not be silent or be silenced when mm-hmm. it came to what was doing, what was supposed to be done right. And so um, those experiences that really shape us and help us to prepare for our lives now. So that process, even the hard parts that, you know, were um, difficult for us and really did help us in a major way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Reverend Stan did teach us how to be soldiers. I mean, mm-hmm. when you talk about systems and government, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Rules and laws and policies and all of the black red tape or black tape or whatever you call it that um, can work to keep you out. Um, it did teach us to keep person. And we did a phenomenal job. Like, you know, I, um, Rose was saying it was hard to get people to come, but those places, once we got to, it was always packed, yeah. right? It always ended up working out <laughs> through blood, sweat, and tears. And I think that also bonded us together as well, mm-hmm. you know, because we were fussed about the system behind the scenes, right? Shake our fist at the system, you know, but it always worked out in the end. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, I definitely say Reverend Stan was a, an amazing example of what it meant to disciple people. And I, I just keep going back to that word, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, it wasn't just spiritual nourishment, but like Tierra said, we learned how to navigate systems, how mm-hmm. to navigate, uh, the different challenges that come with that. And so uh, that college experience just shaped us in so many ways. I mean, mm-hmm. still reaping the blessings from that. Really. Yeah. Man, amen. I received that. Amen. Paying the student loans. All right. <laughs> Listen, the student loans. Mm. He's all right. I still don't it, have it. It is all right. I gladly pay them every month because I was like, <laughs> I got my sisters in the process. So it's all good. <laughs> gladly. That's a that's a nice word to put in. Yeah. That's a trigger. A, tr- right. a trigger <laughs> such trauma. That's a good, good word. It is a trigger. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, but yes we did get each other out of the the deal right <laughs> yeah even though we don't have our photos right stephanie you said what even though we don't have our photos we got sisterhood oh. right? <laughs> wait who oh who photos is it me oh listen yeah we're not gonna talk about that i'm still feeling a little salty about it <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh wow so what advice would you give to a college student who is looking for some type of sisterhood or community who had been who hasn't really found it but desire it what advice would you give her to go about looking for a sisterhood or a community of young women to to connect with because again I had no intention of meeting any of you ladies. God just worked it out that way. But for the generation that's behind us, what advice you would give to her, to them about finding a healthy community? I guess for me, I wouldn't even say it was about finding because that wasn't my intention. Mm -hmm. It was just basically being open, Mm. you know, so... I wouldn't necessarily say I was open, maybe because a certain person kept chasing me down and, and wore me down. <laughs> so <laughs> that's how it happened for me. But yes, just being open once that person chased you down, you know, once God chases you down, because that's mm. really what it was. God was using the shell to chase me down <laughs> and mm. bring me, you know, into, you know, this relationship with you guys. So being open to new experiences, especially, you know, experiences that you will enhance your life Mm, being open I like that um I think for me it's just um the fact that um you show yourself like um being you like not to not um to forget about yourself in the process of trying to make friends in the process of trying to to find that that niche you know um just being you I mean I I feel like you know around you guys I I stick out the most. I mean, I'm Asian, but like I always say, I'm, I don't feel that way, even with you guys. Like, I don't ever feel uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Like, 
because some people would but I don't ever feel uncomfortable I would I I'm just me you know I just whatever you know I I I laugh I cry whatever it is I just feel comfortable and I think that's one of the most thing that you know you don't forget yourself you don't you, you don't forget where you come from and wherever when you do find that sisterhood if they're able, if they're gonna accept you for who you are you have a gem you know you have mm. a gem right there so just being yourself is the most important thing I mean even now I tell my nieces and and my nieces and nephew I you know just try to find you know someone that has uh the same um either faith base or whatever it is that you you do but also, also be careful you know you have to also be vigilant on the things that you you surround yourself and who you open yourself to you know mm-hmm. even, even when they party I tell them I tell them about that you know just the things that I have learned going to college I tell them you know when you have a drink make sure you bring your own drink or mm-hmm. whatever you want to do pre-game before you go to the party whatever you want to do because I do want them to experience that I mean I've experienced it. Thank God. Thank God. I didn't have like a bad experience where, you know, certain things happen, but I wouldn't want that for them. So I would do tell them that even at, you know, before going to college, I would tell them certain things that they have to be careful, you know, and, and that's one of, one of the things and really looking for, for a reverend stand, you know, if, I mean, having reverend stand was really a, a blessing to, to all of us with, you know, the things that he, he says, even now I resonated where he always tells me not to burn out myself because sometimes I do, I, he feels like I give out too much or I want to serve too much to everybody. So he would always tell me that. And I always remember that when I feel like I'm burned out, you know, you're going to burn out yourself, you're going to burn out. So I always, <laughs> and he always tells me that. And I was like, okay, fine. And then it's funny because he does the same thing to himself, but mm-hmm. you know, he's mm-hmm. always they're late because he he has another event before he came to um, but just that you know just being you and not forgetting yourself in the process of meeting new people in the process of trying to to have that um niche in your sisterhood in that relationship you know so Mm. that's thank you that was very powerful i like that you said be careful who you open yourself up to and that is advice for college students, for adult women, adult men, anyone just mm-hmm. being careful who you open yourself up to. That was powerful. I would say a uh, um, couple points of advice for college students. Uh, one, you know, of course, pray and ask God to send you some meaningful relationships. Um, you've heard all of our conversation um, today about how it was God that knit us together. We could never have manufactured or put us together at all. Um, and I would say, um, seek out, seek after those things that you're passionate about. Um, you'll, you'll be surprised at, to, to know, find out that you'll find community there. Um, I, I didn't seek out Living Branch. I actually got, became familiar with Living Branch through the gospel choir. I saw um, one day I was doing my laundry and it was a, a, a sign up. They were looking for musicians for the choir. So that's how I, I, I got introduced to it. Um, so, so you'd be surprised how you make connections just by um, seeking things that you're passionate about. And then, you know, if you don't find that presence on your campus, I would highly encourage you, if you're part of a church, see if you can get your church involved. Mm-hmm. I say this everywhere I go, every chance I get, you cannot overstate the impact of having a Christian representation, a minute student-led ministry on campus. And so mm. if you're at a school that doesn't have it, then be mm. the one uh, to make that happen because yeah. it's just gonna bless you beyond measures as you can see demonstrated um, by all of us today. Mm. Amen, Bishop. I felt like that was a three-point sermon. <laughs> All right, Pastor. All right. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I would say I, I cannot neglect to acknowledge uh, Nichelle, who we keep referring to, but without naming her. Um, I guess it's, I think it's Nevaeh in your book. Mm-hmm. So, and I named Nichelle because all of us in this space are givers. And when you're a giver, it's important to be in a company of givers, right? 
um, being able to find like kind. And my connection to Living Branch actually came by way of Michelle because she offered me oatmeal. Um, and it sounds very weird to say, but um, as I became friends with Michelle, she was always trying to feed me. <laughs> and <laughs> while that sounds very tangible, she spiritually operated as a friend that also worked to try to feed me. Mm. Um, and that was by way of connection to Living Branch and any other resources that she could think of because she is such an emphatic giver. Um, and so I would say my advice, in addition to what you ladies have stated about finding a mentor is really finding yourself in the company of people who feed you as much as you feed others. Mm. And if you are a person who's a taker, um, you know, work to learn the habits of givers so that you can re reverse that because it really is a fruitful life. Mm -hmm. um, and I would say the fruit of our relationship is funny that you name me treasure, but you all have been a part of contributing to my treasure chest. Um, mm -hmm. just by what you guys have poured into me, right? And I value every word, every piece of advice, every hug, every nod, every encouragement. Um, but the openness, you know, and I feel emotional. I'm sorry. Let me pause. Okay. <sighs> the okay. openness that you have in receiving the love from others helps you to water other people. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to be open and to feel the love of God in unconventional ways through your friendships is what helps you to grow um, how to give out. Um, and I think sometimes when we're closed off, when you're closed off, you cannot receive, right? And that turns into a scarcity men mentality where you want to hoard what you have, um, but it doesn't create a fresh flow from you to another person or an exchange. And life is about evolution. And so in order for you to grow yourself, um, you have to be open to receive and also to give at the same time. Um, so I would say that if, the, if I said anything, it, as much as I garbled all of those words is to find yourself in a community of people that give to you as much as you give to them. Mm. That's my Easter speech. <laughs> <laughs> Ask the collection, please. <laughs> Powerful. Wow. You ladies have pointed on so many different variables that are just very important for young women finding a sense of community. Because I feel like when you find community that is healthy and you pray about it and ask God to lead you to healthy and right relationships, you do find yourself. And so, yeah, that was, that was powerful what you ladies mentioned. So thank you for saying that. So on this note, this will be our last question, unless you guys have something else to share, but I want individuals that are watching or listening to today's podcast to always know that there is hope in life after her. And this is the entire message of my, my novel, my fiction novel, my podcast, everything that I do is to help and encourage individuals to know that there is life after her and that you don't have to remain stuck. And there's more blessings that God has for you. And so I want each of you to just share what that message personally means to you. What does life after hurt mean to you? Nicole. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was I? <laughs> Honey, cold. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't feel comfortable answering, that's totally fine. But I, I want to encourage you listeners, right? Because we are in such a different time. We went through a pandemic. We're post-quarantine. Uh, we went through probably one of the hardest and most difficult times in our culture on top of dealing with life experiences and hurts in addition to you know 
our own traumas and hurts that may have come back up during this, you know, whole 19 month um, pandemic. And so I really want people to know that mm. there is life after no matter, dev- no matter what this devastation may have been. Um, and I, I believe that God wants us to walk in a space where we are healed and whole and yes, those experiences happen. Yes, we may have been hurt, but God does not want us to stay stuck there. So what, what does that message personally mean for you? If I could interpret the silence for a moment, um, and I'm not going to be deep. I'm going to use one, I'm going I'm to use one word and then I'll, I'll give the floor to my sisters, but, um, all of us, all of us on this space right now navigate hurt in such a resilient way that when you think about what hurt means to women like us, it's almost like a a misnomer, right? It's like, oh, hurt, I ate that, right? Mm. Because the complexities of our lives, all of us, right? All of us as women of color, you know, uh, Rose, Stephanie, uh, Brittany, Nicole, Tiara, all of us as women of color, navigate life in such a complex way that resilience has become our friend. Um, And so hurt is something that happens to us so consistently that we just learn to roll with the challenges of our lives. And God is the one that shows us how to use the hurt we experience in a moment where he's glorified. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if it were not for God, you know, showing us and whispering to us how to use those very challenging, traumatic and painful experiences we would get stuck in the stupor of our own dirt and mess, right? Mm. So, you know, the old folk would say, if it had not been for the Lord who was, let me stop. (laughs) But if it had been, no, seriously, if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be? Hurt is something that we all will experience every single day for the rest of our lives. Mm. It's what we do with the hurt beyond that pain, beyond that break, beyond that situation that really shows forth of what's on the inside of us. And life after hurt really means that we get to shine again and we get to show forth the glory of God that is revealed in us when we carry the load, right? When we carry, you know, the the breaking on our back and then we emerge as gold, right? Mm. And, And I think the experiences that we go through as women of color in this country are a little bit more, um, heavier, I'll mm-hmm, say, mm-hmm. than the non-women of color. And that's not to mitigate any factors of any any color, right? <laughs> because, you know, just being a woman in general is difficult. But I would say being a Black or brown person in this country comes with another level of complexities that um, needs interpretation, but also lends to the space of how we show up in life. We show up with a different kind of resilience, right? Mm. A different kind of shining. Um, a different kind of overcoming. And so hurt for all of us is something that's so common that we navigate so consistently that sometimes we don't always know that we're carrying hurt the way we're carrying it. Mm -hmm. And that's why our friendship is so important because we get to be a mirror and a reflection to each other to show like, all right, you know, dog, your tail is hanging out because back there, Mm -hmm. you know, you tripped and bust your head to the white meat and now you got to get get to get yourself together and collect yourself and you don't even know you're carrying hurt like you're carrying it Mm. you know um and that's why friendship is so important but I would say navigating life after hurt is really being able to collect yourself after a trial to stand up straight and to operate in a way that looks like or offers that you're working towards healing and wholeness Mm. and I'll stop talking my my treasure that's why you're treasure (laughs) (laughs) yeah um i love what tiara said um and and i will add that um you know in terms of resilience you know just be encouraged to know that hurt is not the end Mm. hurt is in some ways a speed bump Mm. along, along the way and um Though we don't plan for it, some you know some of us can brace ourselves for it. We can see it coming in some ways, but um, some a lot of times it's unexpected. Uh, but at the same time, it gives us an opportunity to, to stop and examine what happened. 
what caused it, what led us there, to be able to sit there for a moment and unpack some things and then make that decision to move forward. And so I think um, Tierra alluded to this, that, you know, life after hurt depends on the decisions we make while we're hurt. Mm -hmm. it, it will determine what life looks like after that. So mm -hmm. I just encourage anyone to know that hurt's not the end. Mm -hmm. The world is not over. It, you know, your dreams are over. You can still dream again. You can still back, bounce back. It's never too late for a new beginning. And um, so life can be so much better than it was on the opposite side of hurt. Mm. Another word. Mm. <clears throat> Very powerful. And just knowing that what do you call um hurt is a good thing. Like let's not shun from her or oh, hurt, you know, but hurt is a good thing because um you will um get closer to God, you will find who you are more. You you you'll learn more of yourself when you are in the midst of her. Um, you will see how um, God is so powerful in your life, how um, how he is in control of everything that's happening, even with that hurt that you are going through. It's a good thing. And sometimes we have to, you know, we sometimes we have to say that to ourselves, that hurt is a good thing because this is how I become stronger. This is how I know myself more. This is how I will be able to foresee what else I need to do different. You know, think, you know, challenges, it happens, but, it's a good thing because this is how God's mold molds us, you know, even just like the process of a pearl, just like a process of a, a diamond, you are in a, a gem, you know, so he's always um, processing us and hurt is, like I said, hurt is a good thing. Mm, thank you. Yes, we have to look at it that way. Hurt is a good thing. Mm. Might not enjoy the process of it, but, you know. It is a good thing. At the end of it, you you will come a better become a better person. For you know, you'll get closer to what has, God has called you to really be the woman that you are to be called or the man. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. I think um, for me, <laughs> right? Personally, it meant that. Every hurtful experience, God does not waste. He mm -hmm. can use the most tragic situation, experience, event to give not only him glory, but also to help you find your purpose. And that part, of course, is beautiful. But as Rose was saying, the process doesn't feel good. But in the end, God has just, a miraculous way of just working all things for our good, no matter what the situation is. And oftentimes we don't see exactly why we may experience what we may experience and go through, but God is able to turn that thing around and to use it for your good, as well as the good of others. So while you're in the midst, just know that it is purpose in it and God can use all of it for, for his glory. So on that note, we will close out our podcast episode number 38 entitled Trials and Triumph. How fitting, right? <laughs> to end on that note. Any any last words for the people? I know we just did a round robin of um, what Life After Hurt meant, but any last words for those who are listening? Just want to shout you out, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and the great things you were doing is just so exciting. Um, yes, happy for you. And we have to get. I don't think we've officially celebrated um, your uh, book launch mm -hmm. uh, with brownies. I would say with brownies. Sounds <laughs> like brownies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we are due for a brownie night. <laughs> we are definitely due for a brownie night. Definitely. So look. So proud of you, happy for you, looking forward to how God continues to expand your platform. Yes, looking forward to book number two, Nicole. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yes, Lord willing, Lord willing. Okay. All right, ladies. I want to thank each of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to just be a part of this podcast but i really feel like it is a movement i believe that god is just calling us to a place of healing and wholeness not only in our own individual lives but being it bringing healing and wholeness to others and so all of you in your special dynamic amazing and beautiful ways have contributed that to today's podcast episode so again Thank you. And just know that you always are welcome to come back and participate in this platform. All right, guys, we will see you next week. I hope that you have a great rest of the day, evening, afternoon, whatever time you are listening to today's podcast episode. And remember that God is proud of you. Bye.